Hello, hope you're all doing well tonight, uh, today, whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is number four, I think, episode four of This Adequate Life. And I didn't get, I didn't actually remember to hold this up at the last time. Uh, this is actually from the thumbnail. And this is the theme today, is having shitty parents. And what you can do about it. Well, there's not a lot you can do about it, to be honest. That's something I've learnt sort of the hard way. Uh, I always had shitty parents when I was a kid, and I'm not talking about when you are sort of, I guess, uh, something's flashing up, sorry, on the uh, the screen. Okay, I'm not talking about when you're a teenager and that, that usual teenage angst where you are going to think your parents are shitty because they're trying to tell you what to do, so you're rebelling and you know all that kind of thing. So I'm not really talking about that, although there can be signs even that early on that the way they engage with you is quite different to what loving, normal, caring parents do. So you may just happen to have been born into a family where your parents are emotionally immature, not very sophisticated, not capable. And I'm not talking about also human fallibility and making mistakes, because all parents are going to do that. So I'm not suggesting that all parents should be perfect, because they're not. And I'm a parent now, and I know I'm making mistakes. So... That's not what I'm holding against my parents in particular, but I just want to share this with people who may have the same experience, is that you just end up with uh, parents that just aren't great, they're just shitty people. And that's actually the first thing to figure out, is that they're, they're not good people. So in my case, they were narcissistic, or they still are, they're around, but I haven't seen them for, I think, four years now, so that's great, I don't have anything to do with them. And there was a huge period of time where I didn't see them I left home at 19 and never looked back, basically. Uh, they came back into my life uh, around the my 30s, uh, and that's when things fell apart pretty quickly anyway because of the things I did. So why I'm sharing this is that, and I won't go into too much detail, except to say, yes, they're, they're alcoholics. Uh, they did physically and uh, psychologically abuse my sister and myself. Uh, no sexual or physical uh, well physical but nothing sexual it was more uh, I guess in those days backhanders and things like that my dad hit me once so hard across the face I it went numb for two weeks I think it was this uh, cheek but I was breaking up a fight between him and my mum he was you know beating on her and I was trying to pull him off I would have been 17 16 17 but yeah he was always much bigger than me and just gave me one of these backhanders with his fist and broke a nerve or did some kind of nerve damage but there was no bruising or swelling or anything for me to get any kind of sympathy from anyone to be honest so I sort of just had to live with that in that period of time but there were other other things it was more the psychological that that sort of you know the put downs and, and all that kind of stuff and uh, it's more of that that I think lingers and probably has a greater effect so that's certainly something I've learned not to do uh, to be more encouraging and supportive of my children. And I guess what happened is I thought they would have changed over time or perhaps come back uh, back into my life, but having evolved as human beings, you know, with some self-reflexivity, uh, which is important, I think, to develop as a human being. But they didn't, and they never will. So what I realize now is that how I interacted with them wasn't the the right way to go so that's kind of what I want to share with you is that there are ways of dealing with parents like that for one thing you cannot sort of engage with them emo emotionally so don't get upset with them because they're not going to actually read that and be sort of uh, compassionate or empathetic towards you they're just going to be repulsed by you that's actually something I learned and has indeed happened that they never really wanted to uh, allow me to be myself. So you kind of have to get away from that. Fortunately, lots of good friends. My sister's great. We're, we've got a great um, relationship. I now have in-laws. I have my wife, of course, but in-laws that are fantastic. And my grandparents were there for me, and my great uncle as well. So there was enough of a network that I survived and became well-rounded. So my, my sincerest empathy and... Um, sympathy for those of you who perhaps don't have that kind of support so that can happen where you you know even the abuse is more severe than what I experienced um, I'm not going to try and put myself in the same category as someone who's had some serious physical abuse and sexual abuse or anything like that I mean the abuse was kind of I guess standard for the period of time perhaps one might say things have changed a lot since then but they're still 
behaving in a way or have behaved in a way which means I had nothing more to do with them that was still about holding me back, um, not really wanting to be supportive or at least uh, engaged with me as an adult human being because they don't have normal adult emotions, that they're stuck in a narcissistic kind of infantilist world. Um, and I, I don't like help, uh, self-help books, but I actually have a book here which captures perfectly my situation. It's called um, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, How to Heal from Distant, Rejecting or Self-Involved Parents. So the only thing I don't really like about this title is that How to Heal. I'm not one for touchy-feely, uh, perhaps it's <laughs> indicated by my upbringing, but um, I don't like the idea of it suggesting that you can actually heal from this sort of thing. I think you can cope with it. I think you can get past a lot of things, but you can't really heal. I think being betrayed by your own family is one of those things, it's, it's, it's Shakespearean, it's kind of one of those things I don't think you can ever get past. Um, and there was a really good chapter towards the end, actually, that I just thought was important to point out, that um, there's these myths that you believe, and uh, they're kind of not what you would presume is a normal uh, parental behavior. So all parents love their children. Well, simply not true, because not all parents do love their children. Uh, that's evident through um, child abuse and um, infanticide and things like that. A parent is the one person you can trust. A parent will always be there for you. You can tell your parents anything. Your parents will love you no matter what. You can always go back home. Your parents only want what's best for you. Now this is the thing. Your parents only want what's best for you. What I realized, my parents never wanted my sister and I to do better than them. So they've tried to do whatever they can to destabilize or unsettle us or just be snarky, I guess. It's maybe the, the simplest um, colloquial way of putting it. it the put-downs when we were young were one thing, but once, once we got away and we started being our own people and doing things, they were never happy to see us um, develop or evolve or be successful. And they know more than you do. Well, that's just not true. Parents don't know more than you do. They're just people. So they know as much as they know, given their education and their uh, curiosity. My parents aren't particularly intellectually curious, so they didn't really develop. That's what I'm saying from what they were when let's you know make excuses for them they were young and perhaps didn't know how to be parents but 20 years later it didn't change uh whatever your parents do they're doing it for your own good uh, that simply isn't true either parents are not always doing things for your own good they're often doing things not all parents but you know the ones the bad ones the shitty ones are often doing things for their own self-interest so my parents are just completely self-involved uh, to the point that they've not seen their second grandchild not had any interest I tried to reach out and I, I've given up and that does hurt that actually is the only thing that really hurts now not seeing that I don't want to see them it's not like I'm trying to uh, resolve anything anymore uh, I think that's the other thing I've learned is that there, there sometimes is no resolution so you cannot actually get to a point where it's like in a movie where there's the deathbed scene and everything sort of gets resolved and everyone hugs and cries and it's all going to be okay. That simply in real life doesn't happen. Uh, and I don't expect this to happen with my parents. I don't really want it to happen. I'm not looking for that to happen. But I want to share with people that what you could do, which I didn't do, is maybe look at a book like that, which I'll link down below. Have a look at it. It's got pretty good ratings on Amazon. Uh, I can see why. There's a lot of stories in it that don't relate, really. I mean, there's aspects of them, but there's a lot of these sort of case studies or uh, individual stories that may or may not um, ring true with you. They didn't all with me, but there were certainly some elements. I was going, oh, yeah, that, that reminds me of things that they've done with me. So it, it was good in that respect, but there were some ways of sort of how, how to cope. And I, can't really, I don't want to even try and do it verbatim, but there was this one section telling you how best to engage with your parents when they're like that. It's almost like they're on a sociopathic spectrum. They're somewhere, I don't want to call my parents sociopaths, but some of the behavior, like that lack of compassion, lack of empathy for others, an inability to be self-aware, manipulative, very manipulative, uh, that kind of behavior, you can accidentally sort of play into it when you're trying to actually be normal amongst these abnormal people who don't have the same 
uh, let's say, emotional ability to engage with you or themselves, that they're not very honest with themselves. My parents are pathological liars, that I know for sure. Um, there's evidence of that, uh, which again, I'm not going to go into detail. So they can have this um, complete self-denial, and then for you to try and reflect that onto them will not actually help them uh, to have any kind of insight or sudden revelation. It actually just cements things. And I think we're learning that with a lot of political, partisan, politics stuff, is that sometimes you can show people the worst part of their beliefs and they will not actually want to change their beliefs. They, they dig in even more. So that kind of can happen in your relationships with, I guess, anybody. And in my case, with my parents. But it could be in a loving relationship or what you think is a loving relationship with a partner and then you find that it's actually not because there's too much sort of happening from their perspective, not yours, meaning that they've, um, they're ultimately trying to keep control. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot, I don't want this to get into sort of too much of that relationship stuff, but it was something that kind of I wanted to put out there because, and I might talk to this some more, I want, I know that there's going to be some young people out there that were the same as me that had just shitty parents and didn't realise until much later. And so a book like that, which I'm going to link, might give you some clues and then help you to get past it and just sort of grit your teeth and get through it if you're having to live under the same roof. But of course, for some people, even when you leave, a lot of it sort of that baggage goes with you. So I'd say I've still got some of that baggage, but it's so burnt in that there's no real way of getting rid of it. That's why you don't really heal. You just kind of cope. You just kind of make the best of um, the life or the hand you've been dealt. And you can see sometimes like with my wife and her family, you can sort of see what a loving, functional family actually looks like and it just shines a light on how bad your family was. And you thought, well, okay, they were alcoholics and it was dysfunctional, but hey, in the end it was going to be okay, but it actually wasn't and um, never would have been. That's the big revelation for me. No matter what I would have done, it would never have worked out. Uh, it was only predicated on lies and dishonesty. And once I found out the truth about a bunch of things, then it was kind of, um, oh, okay, well, there was no point in actually ever believing that it would be any different. So there you go. Some of us are stuck with having shitty parents, and you have to find that love and support and uh, network elsewhere. And friends are great for that. If you've got grandparents or other relations, even if you marry into them, that are better than your own family or your own parents, then uh, that's quite crucial. And so... Like I say, if, if you don't have that, then, then look for that support that's uh, perhaps institutional support, you know, therapy or something like that. I've never felt I needed it. I did a psychology degree to kind of come to terms with a lot of this stuff. And that book, like I say, I'm not a big one on self-help books, but that was pretty good to get my head around the fact that there's some inevitabilities with relationships and not everything's going to work out. Okay, well that's that one. That was mm, not too heavy. I mean, I'm feeling pretty uh, comfortable with it these days. I'm just getting on with life and trying to be the best dad I can be and not repeat that cycle, which is something that people say can keep coming up, is that if you don't learn from your parents' mistakes, you're inevitably going to make the same mistakes. But of course, being human, we're still going to make mistakes. We're still going to do things wrong. So, yep, take care, and I'll try and get another one up in a couple of days.